I'm going to show you uh, some, yeah, some tools. So some things that you must have and they're pretty easy and cheap to buy are some sucketeers. So these are just really basic florist sucketeers. I've always found them really good. Um, you need to keep them out of water, keep them away from water because they will rust. But, uh, and these are just kind of, you know, maybe $8, $8 from Bunnings or some, from flower supplies. Um, also, you need a separate pair. So if you're going to have two pairs, have one for cutting your small wires and your thin wires. And then you also do need to get some U-Butte wire cutters. Now, these ones are, I bought them... I think they were about $23 from a metal, uh, a proper metal shop. So they cut your thicker wires and any wires that uh, are harder because your hands get quite sore in the industry. When you're holding bouquets all the time, a lot of florists suffer from RSI. So uh, the less that you can put strain on your hands, the better. And definitely need some scissors so you probably need two pairs of scissors one for cutting cello or paper uh, when you're wrapping bouquets and things like that and you definitely need another pair just for ribbon because what will happen is your ribbon scissors uh, need to be really sharp these are dress proper dressmaking scissors I inherited them from my nana when she passed away and they are really good scissors and I don't use them for anything else if I started cutting wires with these, I'd get um, dings and uh, it would damage my scissors. So that when I did come to cutting a fine ribbon, which, you know, it's a lovely silk ribbon or lovely lace, it, it wouldn't cut properly. And it's really frustrating when you just want to snip it off and you might have your hands full and you've forgotten to get yourself prepped properly and... You've got the, the ribbon um, sort of in your other hand while you're holding the bouquet in the other and you've got this ribbon and you can't cut it properly. Really frustrating. So make sure that, that your scissors only get used, your ribbon scissors only get used for ribbon. Very, very specific. The other thing that you need, which is actually under my armpit, I know, but you'll know why when I start doing parafilming techniques. This is called parafilm. It's a green tape. Um, it's uh, stretchy. It's not stretchy at the moment because I've, there you go, you can kind of see it's stretching. When it's cold, it doesn't work properly. So, at the, and it's probably a little bit older, this tape, so it's probably not as fresh as what it could be, but you can see it's stretching, okay? There are certain techniques to use for this, okay? Uh, and I'll be keeping all these little bits because I can use them, reuse them all. You don't throw anything out if you can help it because you're just wasting money and um, I've learned these techniques through a proper TAFE course in Sydney so all of my floristry training was conducted at Ultimo TAFE back in I think I became a florist in 1990 well I was I remember being pregnant for the last part of it and I remember walking up all these stairs with all my flowers and it was really hardcore so I remember being pregnant. So I was pregnant in 1995. So I think I finished the course in December 1995 and had my baby in June 1996. So um, anyway, I just, it was, it was hard going even for, yeah, you know, I won't talk about that. But anyway, parafilm is essential. You have to buy some parafilm. Buy some good quality parafilm because when you buy the cheaper stuff, it'll just break all the time. It's like cheap toilet paper. It just, it's not, it's not very good. You can get by without it, but it's quite frustrating. Buy your good parafilm from a good supplier. Keep it under your arm. I'm keeping on mine under my arm. I'm going to show you some wiring techniques in the next video, and it works better when it, it works properly when it's warm. So uh, another thing, tape, florist tape. Uh, again, buy your good stuff. This is proper florist tape. I've bought this from. Kosh Co, which is where I used to have a wholesale account. So I would go down um, once every so often, maybe not very often, because I, I really would get, um, just buy a bulk lot of stuff, you know, $400 worth of stuff, and just that is sort of do me for years, because I didn't do many weddings, you know. But florist tape is really important. And the reason why I recommend two widths, not essential, 
And you know, this isn't even essential for our florist kit, but as we're going through, we'll use it from time to time. It's not an essential thing. I didn't have this to begin with for probably a couple of years, but when I got it, I realized how good it was. So not essential, but good to have different, different thicknesses. It is sticky. It's, um, it's obviously like a tape. So I've got no nails at the moment because I bite them, which is very naughty, especially around coronavirus. Anyway, so it's just like a sticky tape and it's, it just works really great around stems. It holds stems. It's not like, it's not like your normal cello tape, which won't hold. This holds. Okay, so even if it went in water, if it's tightly held around a stem, it'll stay. But there are techniques to it, preferably not with water. But anyway, that's another story. You can also get white, white tape. I have barely used it, to be honest, but it is good for wedding work if you want to hide your mechanics, which is your work. Um, but you can really get around it. You don't really have to have that. It's just, again, it's just one of those things that's good to have, but you don't really have to have it. Um, things that I use for everything are these florist pins. They're called pearl pins. Um, yeah, they're 50 millimeters. They're the best size to get because you use them. So you see the, so they're just like got a little pearl on the end, like a little pearl pin. And I've used them, I'll give you an example of how I've used them. You can use, this is just a, a, a fake um, wedding bouquet I made up, just with leftover flowers that I had. Um, but see how I've used the pearl ribbon, pearl, so I've, after I've done the really tight handle, which I'll explain how to do that, because there is a technique to that as well. But you put these pearl pins up in there so that when you're holding it, you're not gonna get stabbed, okay? So there's a technique to the pearl pins, which we'll explain at another time. But you can just see they just look really pretty. And rather than just a pin that goes in with a silver head, the pearl pins are really popular for, for, for wedding work. So pearl pins are really important. Once upon a time before buttonhole holders were made, these were the things that you used to put into your lapel. So this is how you would, if you didn't have a buttonhole holder, you would use these pearl pins, probably just two, and you'd put them in the lapel with with the um, with your corsage. Or not well, you could do it with the corsage as well, and you use that's how you used to put it on with your corsage. But we're not doing those sorts of corsages anymore. Generally, you just use wrist corsages now, which we'll explain in a minute. So they're your pearl pins. They're really good for just stuff around the house that you need as well. They're really, really useful. Again, buy the good quality ones because otherwise they bend and it's so annoying. Rubber bands. Rubber bands are so useful in floristry. Get yourself a big bag. They'll last you forever. Um, I've had my bag for, I don't know, probably 15 years. <laughs> I just bought a really big bag of them because they're really great. And you use them for lots of other things around the house as well. Um, I've been finding that when I buy my asparagus and broccoli from, or broccolini from Audi, that there's little ones, little blue ones. I did have one here, but it's gone somewhere. Anyway, they're just like little blue ones. I keep all my rubber bands. They're so useful to keep, keep for different things. And yeah, absolutely essential. Good, good ones again, because they don't break. Um, little tip, don't keep them in the sun, keep them in a drawer. Um, in the dark, they're a little bit, little bit like mushrooms in that sense, because as soon as the sun um, hits on hits on them, they'll start deteriorating. So keep that in mind as well for your for your rubber bands. Okay, another thing essential that you need for what we're doing: wires. So these are the wires that I'm talking about. So I've done, like normally they're a lot straighter than that. But this is quite a long wire. These are these are your long stem wires, and this is a 22 gauge. So when we're talking about gauges in wires, we're talking about thicknesses, okay? And 22 gauge is your most used gauge in a flower shop. You have to have 22 gauge in a flower shop. Anything less than that, so 